Let me talk to you a little bit about the importance of what we're doing. We're doing the Keep It Made in America tour. We're going to go through 34 to 36 cities in the next four days talking about the importance of manufacturing, but talking about the auto industry as the foundation of the manufacturing industry. If we have no auto industry, we have no manufacturing industry. We've done the research. There's close to 7.2 million people in this country, 7.2 million families that get their paycheck because we've got a viable auto industry, because we've got a viable domestic auto industry. And we're not going to stand around while Wall Street and incompetent management in the car industry destroy our kids' future. We're not going to stand around and let it happen without a fight. Someone said to me, you can't be right. If we're not making cars, we're not using steel. If we're not using steel, we don't need iron ore. If we're not making and using iron ore, we don't need mining equipment. If we're not transporting iron ore in the mine, we don't need conveyor belts. If we're not selling cars, we don't need brochures. If we don't need brochures, we don't need coated free sheet paper. We'll lose our paper mills. If we're not making parts, we're not putting things in boxes, we'll lose our box plants. If we're not moving those, we don't need our railways and our trucks. If you don't have a plant, you don't have a little coffee shop across the street that a mom and dad is running. If you shut down Granite City Steel, well, we got Indian Steel sitting in the backyard. I don't see anybody coming from India to drink coffee at the coffee shop. <laughs> Keep these numbers in mind. Japan exports 4.5 billion dollars worth of vehicles to America every year. Japan accepts 535 million dollars worth of vehicles in Japan from America. Korea. Korea brings in about 8.7 billion dollars worth of cars into America. And Korea accepts $373 million worth of cars into Korea. Now, you don't need a Wall Street degree in economics to figure that out. That gives us almost a $48 billion deficit in auto imports and exports. Somebody needs to tell me why that's good for America and why our government tolerates it. When General Motors says, give us $17 billion, help us draft a new business plan, and we'll bring General Motors to profitability. And that profitability will be arrived by destroying people's health care by shutting plants in this country and by importing more cars from China, from Korea, from Japan, from Mexico, from Brazil. Let me tell you what the French president said. The president of France said, we'll invest eight and a half billion dollars to save our auto industry, but as a condition of us saving the auto industry, they can't lay anybody off, they can't close any plants, and they can't export any jobs. If it's good enough for France, it's good enough for us. Sisters and brothers, we need friends. We need to change the economic direction of this country. And we're not going to do it at rallies like this. We're going to start it at rallies like this. You got to be prepared to fight. You gotta be prepared to go in the streets. You gotta be prepared to drive to Wash. You gotta be prepared to Brock Roads. You gotta be prepared to occupy plants. We can't let them give away our future. We gotta tell this administration, this administration that wouldn't be there without us, that they ain't about Wall Street. They gotta start to become about Main Street. They can't be about manipulating money on Wall Street. Wall Street don't make nothing. There's a reason they call it the gross domestic product, GDP. You know why they call it gross domestic product? Because you got to make a product. Yeah. 
Wall Street don't make a product. Wall Street manipulates money. So if we're going to do this, we've got to change the direction of the country. How many of you know what the accumulated trade debt is in America since the passage of NAFTA? Now you listen very carefully. You listen very carefully. Because in the next few weeks, you'll hear in Washington people yelling and screaming, what well, we got to worry about this budget deficit. It's going to be $2.3 trillion, right? It's going to be some huge number that we can't comprehend. Let me give you this number. Take this to the bank. Well, not really to the bank. You can't trust those idiots anyway. <laughs> Put this under your pillow. The accumulated trade debt of America since the passage of NAFTA is $6.5 trillion. Last year's trade debt, before the poop hit the fan, was $800 billion. If we keep doing $800 billion a year, and we've got an accumulated debt of $6.5 trillion, next year that's $7.3 trillion, the year after that that's $8.2 trillion. That's seven trillion dollars that will be next year. We got to service that debt. That's China telling us what we can do. That's the, our bankers telling us that we might change your currency. We might switch and become a new global currency. And in order to keep on their side, we've got to pay out every year, every year to service that debt. Four to five to six hundred billion dollars. Four to five to six hundred billion dollars bails out everybody that needs to bail out. But more importantly, it saves our homes. It gives our kids an education without being in debt. It gives us national health care. It gives us the future that we all need. We can't get there unless we change the direction of this country. We can't get there unless we get a fair trade policy. We can't get there unless we end up saying that it's time to quit watching out for Wall Street, start watching out for Main Street, start standing up for our kids, start standing up for our grandkids, we had good jobs. Our kids ought to have the same damn chance, if not better. Fight on, fight on, fight on, fight on, fight on. Thank you.